Okay, following on from my post on the Hard Ops Facebook group, both of them have gone, I thought I'd, uh, I'd show you how I went about it. The, uh, this is the gun in question, and I've just done ortho views of it, so I can, you can see that both sides are slightly different. Most of the detail is the same, but I have made one or two differences here. I'll explain how you can do that and still keep it non-destructive later. Um, there's two ways of going about it. You can either do all the work and then finish off the edit or you can start with a base shape like I have done here. Where I put that in and this little top section ready so that I don't have to tidy up in later on but you can start with just a box and then do your tidy up which is what I'm actually going to do uh, I use a lot of uh, manual changes while I'm working uh, so I'll tend to use box cutter but keep the shape a lot just because I can massage it and especially in this case because I'm kind of copying what I'm already doing um, and just basically want to show how quick box cutter and hard ops together make life to go from that to this so without further ado let me start with this and I'm already in box cutter mode so just make sure I'm in box mode I am and we're coming to about here, I think. Just cut that. Oh, the first thing I need to do is switch on my symmetry. There we go. And say somewhere around the for the second cut. Okay, the next thing. And shift Z that I, I do this a lot because I'm sort of cheating by using this as a, a backdrop. Okay, I go into Engon and I can choose click on it, press 2 or press N. And I'm going to hold down control because I want to control the angle of the cut. tab and you can see that's quite a way away and then you cut through that or an alternative is if we go and we start within here we can then guarantee that we're cutting on the surface surface even so I'll do control again take it up to about there bring it across press tab just to lock it and E to extrude that do all just to pad it out a bit and there we go so that's that one shift Z back in the front view ok now go back into box mode so B and we'll say roughly there like that and I tend to operate with the box cutter first and then I'll just hit J to switch to that and again this is a case where I'll shift click to keep the GY to nudge it out a bit just because I'm not 100% sure how it handles completely cold planar in that situation and uh, G Z just again I'm cheating here lining it up scale Z with the background exactly scale Y so there we go and hide that so that's good so that's that bit done pretty quickly and um, now we look at all the other stuff so uh, we'll just do again I would do a box so from roughly around there just pull it out drag it down that one not bothered.
bothered about. And again, Shift Z, Control Three, get it roughly lined up. D N. Control click, drag across. Same again, double click. That one's that quick. I mean, you you can see what roughly what I'm doing there. I'm using the same keystrokes over and over again. Uh, it's more a case of showing you just how quick this can be. So, so DB. Oh, that's my mouse. That for some reason it does it every so often. O J. Shift click. Scale X, bring that in. GZ. How does that look compared to that? Can afford to go out a bit and up actually. GZ. Bit. GX a bit. Actually, scale X a bit. Yeah. And scale Y a bit as well. And a bit more. And I'll use the array. That's that bit done. Alright, let's do this bottom bit. Now, to edit this bit, you'll actually pull the cutter in. So, go into edit mode on that. Two for edge, control B. Actually, before a control B, I'm going to do a control A, apply the scale, just to ensure that that bevel is nice and tidy. Because the scale was slightly off on the Z, it was corrupting the bevel somewhat. And just a bit more. That'll do for now. Alright, hide the cutters. What else have we got? Oh yeah, that bit, so let's go under here. Again, shift, shift Z, control 3, select it, D, and gone. Control, dum, da dum, and DB. Shift Z. Uh, one thing I will have, I should say, is save this often. Um, I was having a bash at this before, and it was crashing quite consistently. Ironically, it had crashed a couple of times by now, but now it's just not doing it, which is a good thing. Right, what have we got? Oh, that bottom bit, that's right, that's where I was at. So again, DB, D, I'm in box. Uh, again, here, I'll choose the cutter. Cut in, choose J, O. Offset and shift click just getting roughly where I want. I'll do uh, same thing again. J Shift, scale Z, GZ, GX. So about there, that'll do. Q array. Q array. That'll do. Save. Right, again, shift Z, control three, just so I'm placing this where I want it to be. We'll go a bit further up this time. Come across. J. Oh, come out a bit. Shift click, shift Z. Oh. J. Shift click, then shift Z. And that can 
go out on the X a tiny bit. I think we're happy enough with that. Apply the scale because again I'm going to be doing a bevel. And once again do an array. We want four. Somewhat like that. Go into edit mode, three for face. Just move that up so the other one cuts into the thing. I'm happy we with that. Save. So far so good. Okay. Uh, this time because I'm just doing direct cuts. I'm going to actually use the, the bevel within box cutter using the shift to slow it down a bit so I've got better control over it. Just double click that. That sort of detail I'll do once I've finished it and I can just work on the final mesh. Assuming you do want to work destructively in the end. Right, again, shift Z, control 3. Let's see where we've got. So, add a box. Now, in wireframe, there you saw that was getting some interesting results. And if I switch wireframe on here, you can see now how that's working. And to get around that, I can go into edit mode. You see that's given a cut. Now that needs to go up a bit so it doesn't interfere with that one. There we go. So that gives it a cleaner cut. And again in here, I'll do a KZC and just slice because I know I'm going to put something in there. And I want it. Now that's, that's gone into make mode because I hadn't got the other object selected. So just select it. B for bevel. B for bevel. Um, I actually want to play with that, so I'll actually just switch that last one back on. Move it up a bit, move it in the Y a bit, scale it on the Z a bit. Apply the scale so the bevel really works. That'll do nicely. Now just make some pretty little dinks in this. What happened there is I did a laser cut, I accidentally double clicked instead of just clicking once. And I've done a laser click there as well, so let's try that again, shall we? Oh, now that's broken it. Okay, well, I'll do out of edit mode. Try again, go back into it. Oh, this is interesting. That is not doing what I expected it to do now. I have no idea what's happened there. Right, I had to go away and come back again to try and figure out what was going on there, and I figured it out, and it was something really simple. I don't know what button I'd pressed, but I'd gone and I'd actually changed it to world orientation. So anything I do was in the world and I just need to go back to that and set it back to object. 
and then it works again and that's all that was uh, I had recorded another segment got halfway through it and Blender crashed only to find out I'd been using my old keystroke to save my files and so guess what it didn't save so I had to go back and rebuild this before I could continue therefore make sure you are actually saving using that if you're not sure right okay so where were we ah right yeah so that would be the next thing so again shift Z, control 3 alt w d yeah i'm in box mode that's great so come on here and offset j shift click shift click because i'm going to work on it and go into edit mode control r bring that out there choose that shift z control 3 scale z scale like y inset it extrude it back okie doke oh and I want to put a cut in here as well actually know what I do want to do, I want to put the cut there because I'm going to be adi adding to this a circle J O E just make sure it's in. Double click. And that's all good. Yep. So again, we'll save. Is there anything else left to do for this before we start on the non? Oh yes, there's that bit. Right. So D for box cut this in J O bring it out now you see again this is not solving nicely so I'll just shift click and all that there and what I need then is the actual cutter for this so, so select that cutter and control R Actually, let's let's cut this straight across. There we go. I'll move that up. And select that cutter move that in slightly on the X so that's good and we want another one here this will actually go all the way in to this so extrude it slightly offset first so J E offset take that down scale it on the Z something like that that'll do then I'm on one here J offset something like that that'll do it's similar to that other one it's not identical but it's close enough right so again control S to save 
make sure it's saved. Right. So the next bit involves working on part of it which is not symmetrical. And so what I do there is go to the behaviour, turn my sort modifiers off. And I'm just going to actually add a cube in this case. Now which, if I'm right, that's actually added this in this hit, hit area. So I need to move that to where it belongs, scale it down. GY scale control three shift Z move that around to roughly where it needs to be. It's good enough for me. Right. First thing I'll do is I'll apply scale. Go into edit mode. I mean, this is being a little pedantic on my part. It doesn't have to be so precisely lined up to the others, but I can't help myself. And make sure that that's staying within the mesh. It is good. Okay. Take that up to the going to EY. Choose these three, drop them down. Again, I like to go into local. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. EY. Let's just hide that gun so we can see what we're playing with. Three. Now I want this to tilt, so I'll use shear. Why? I've just realised I've not turned the screen cast keys back on. Okie doke. I mean, I've been using exactly the same keys. Control save, because I'm getting a bit twitchy now. Okay, Blender crashed again. So, right, I got to that stage and what I'll do is I'll just actually scale that slightly on the X so those things are sticking out nicely. Okay, that's fine. And control save because we are paranoid. I haven't actually applied that to that yet, so Q Boolean Union hide that. Control save. Right. So now D circle okay. This is another instance as well where you might want to actually add a loop cut. So I do a control R there, bring it up to the, then rehide that cutter, it gives me a, bit, a much tidier result. Control save because we're paranoid. Hide that. Do for box. Offset, join, same thing. Call that cube back up, go in, add another loop cut, then hide it, and that just makes for a better result. Now, as you can see, it's gone on there as well, so once again, we're going to have to come to this go down and move that up to the 
so those two don't get applied before the mirror. Well, in fact, that one needs to go as well, so this is interesting because I had actually told it not to sort. Ah, the sort modifiers is back on. Oh, of course I reloaded it because it crashed. That's what's been doing that. Alright, so that's obviously only saved with your settings, not per scene. Be aware of that. Right, let's see if we uh, can't do this. Bevel. Right, that's working now, that's better. Right. And now we want to add. And again, as I said before, I'll use the offset once I've done what I want. So I'll cut that in. J, O for offset. Push that in. I'll tab to hold it. See if I'm liking what I'm seeing. V. That's the thing you've got to watch with the the array. Sometimes it does it doesn't appear to have worked because it just vanishes off screen. Hold Shift, click. We'll live with that. That's something I may tidy up later. Okay. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna actually turn this into an A go into edit mode take that and delete the vertices shift S actually just go into there and come out I'm gonna go no come on Colin got it right Subdivide to Control B A Subdivide Subdivide Scale Z Something like that will do A scale Alright And do you know what? do now we're going to do control F poke faces and then alt J to turn it into the I twice delete faces come out GX Q T thick there we go and um, what I'm going to do now is just turn off the wireframe, see how it all looks. Pretty and control save. So that's pretty much the gun body done. Apart from that, which I add later once I'd, I added that later once I sort of finished everything and tidied things up. Yeah, there is that, we could put that in I suppose. Why not? Scale Y Yeah, actually we're gonna need to drag that out on the Y. Oops. something. There we go. Control save. So that would be the body done. Except as it turns out it isn't. <laughs> I'd forgotten the back bit. So just to make sure we're in. Yeah. Okie dokie. So let's just do this back bit. There we go in a bit. Shift click. 
screw it all. Bump. Just adding the details here, I just realised I'd stopped talking. I was thinking about what I was doing. <coughs> um, just adding the, the rear details. Just to Technically, I could have just left that highlighted and just extruded it, and it would have saved me a bit of time there. Oh, that is not on the medium point. There we go. That's better. And now we just want something in here just to give it a bit of <coughs> interest active again. Sorry about that. But again, I'm, as I said in my previous ones, I'm, I'm using all the stuff that I've done in the other options, so there's nothing spectacularly different that I'm doing here. Oh, that's interesting. Right, control Z. Let's go into that. I'll just control B that. Nah, it was a interfering because it was too close to the the blend point. Oh, that's a bit nicer. Actually, I'm going to drag that forward a bit. Just a bit more. That's it. Happy with that. And I'll tell you what, we'll have a we'll have a cut through that. interesting scale Y bring that out so it, it only impacts this particular thing hide that now this is a case where you would do a bit of tidying up once you'd applied the older modifiers if you're that way inclined or applied specific modifiers because that there is just outside of the smoothing point so it's leaving things so I'd go in there having applied it mark those edges sharp 
Uh, let's just have a quick look at the gun to see if there's anything else going on the back there. Oh yeah, there was that bit at the bottom. So, oh, again, not highlighted the amps bump start box bump. Right, okay, now let's try. So, once again, push it in, take it out, make it a J, leave it at that, then we'll just put a nice little cut in there. There we go. Close enough for rock and roll. Uh, this bit again, I would apply these cuts and and do that by hand rather than. So sort of, I mean, you could use you could use a move that along the X. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that the origin. Just make it easier so I can rotate it on the x-axis. Uh, I can get a a better work there. So you can sort of start the beginnings of it. I do that a lot as well. I'll, I'll use the the normal or the local, so do a GY, then Y again, and then I can control when I'm moving the cutter, whether I'm cutting it or moving it along its local or global axis. I use that an awful lot. So I like I could I could use either GYY or GZZ there. So anyway, that that's that bit done. And so now I can say, yeah, that uh, now the body is actually done. <coughs> I'm going to stop this video here. I'm thinking of doing another video where I, I don't talk and I'm just trying to go through and model this from the, the cube so you can see without me waffling on. Oh, there you are. Now. There's an interesting point if I undo that and I scale that on the GG, on the ZZ not ZZ, YY. Oh, scale it, Colin, not move. You can see how that's affecting that. That's better. There we go. Uh, anyway, I was about to say, so I'll just <coughs> model it without describing the rough process I'm going about. So you can uh, you can see what I'm up to, but you can see how quickly it'll take place when you're not actually wittering on. Uh, the downside, obviously, by the way, of applying all your modifiers is you then have to m any changes you want to make. You can you're going to have to go into the actual geometry and change it. Whereas here, if you look at these here, if I make all of these visible, then I'll just hide that because that's part of the barrel that I was playing with in the interim. I can sort of look at bits of this. And I can say, oh well, this for example, looking at that, that needs to be wider. So I can still select this, move it along, and then scale it on the Y, make it bigger. Uh, likewise with this one, I can move that down, scale it on the Z, make it more square, while still keeping it separate. Same with that one, I can scale it on the Z and make it thicker. I can move it along on the Y. Move it up a bit. Scale it out a bit. So now all this is still taking place in a non-destructive fashion. So the, there's that, but I mean truthfully, normally once I've reached this sort of point, I would tend to apply everything so I can start mucking about with things personally. I mean, again, go in here, edge mode, select that edge, bevel it, and I hide the cutters. So it's still all fluid, even at this point. So, uh, as I say, once you've applied your modifiers, that does go. So it's, I'd probably advise creating a copy of it. Um, 
and then and working on that or you know saving a, an iteration of the scene so you can always revert back to the the non-solid version if you like because again if I select this oh, I'm in edit mode for that that's interesting even though I've disabled the cut cutters now it doesn't look like I can select anything but that's because I'm still in edit mode of something I've disabled so go back to object mode I'm good but again in edit mode look at the difference there between the actual geometry and the finished result so if you were to delete, delete all your modifiers that's all you'd be left with oh, that, obviously that's another object but so it shows you that, in fact, that shows you that beautifully. Only the mesh is another object. Everything else, it's still a cube. Uh, I mean, hard ops and box cutter are awesome. Check that out. So, <coughs> anyhow, enough wittering on from me. I shall see you in the next video where I'll be doing the barrel using more or less exactly the same procedures. <coughs>